You still have five sages to awaken, so lounging around won't get them here any faster. Carry your tone differently, Elite. You speak to the General of the Shield. Oh, I see. You uh, kept that uh, hammer blade glaive spear thing from the other night. I don't care if he's the General of the Universe. It doesn't change the fact at hand. <laughs> Whoa, guys, relax. We'll get there. Give it time. We got to 500, didn't we? How many do we need for the next one? You'll need 700, as well as completing their specific temple to wake them up. Oh, puzzles? That sounds fun. We're doomed. Well, anyway, I have to get this tutorial underway. So I've got a couple of requests about this topic now, and if I missed one, I'm sorry. I've just been really caught up lately making campaign-style checkpoint respawns. My first attempt at this was pretty scary. Wanna see? Oh yeah, much scare. Well, luckily, I've narrowed this down to this, do the same thing in 21 nodes. Knocked it out of the park this time, I think. Of course, the larger the map, the more nodes you'll have to make because, you know, the nodes involve object references in the areas of your map, but it's very easy process to repeat. One last thing before we get to the tutorial. I have an announcement. I've officially launched this channel's Discord server. Here I can interact with members a little bit better, so that way I can see screenshots of errors and other things like that. And I have sections set up for different help topics and even a place to showcase your projects you're working on. Talk amongst like-minded forgers and become part of a forging community that helps us all be better at what we do. See upcoming tutorial topics, past tutorial links once there becomes too many, and it even has a section for my second project, my ZHS Machinimus. Bear with me though, as I've never used Discord before this and I'm still learning my way around it, so if any Discord wizards out there would like to help me find my way beyond what I have set up already, that would be great. On to the video! Okay, as for map setup, uh, we're actually going to be doing a lot more than usual, and probably more map setup than scripting, which is odd for a change, but sometimes uh, this is better for those people who just aren't a fan of scripting, but anyway. I have my little course set up here just to represent the different sections of the map. So like this would be your first area that where the players would spawn in your in your campaign map. This would be the area in which they would go to next to like the next big area. That obviously you're going to have like much bigger areas probably, but this is just to give you an example and it will uh, it generally works the exact same way for the most part. So anyway, what we're going to do is go ahead and set up our spawn points and that's yeah, our respawns. Your initial spawns, you're going to want them in your first area, obviously, where you would start the game at. Uh, but as for the spawn points, we don't got to name any of them or do any settings to them, which is awesome. All we need to do is just have a few to kind of demonstrate. Uh, I'm going to have them facing the numbers, so that way, whenever it works, we can actually see what section we are in as soon as we respawn without having to take too much extra time. So I'm going to go ahead and fill up these two next sections, and we'll come back to it whenever I get them set up. Okay, so we have our spawn points set up. Uh, the placement doesn't matter as much as long as you just have a way to keep them separate from each other to make sure that what we're, our volume that we're about to use doesn't overlap with them. There's a reason why that's important because we're going to use spawn volumes this time. I'm going to place this right here. There's something really neat about these spawn volumes, but uh, for now, you want to make sure that all the uh, spawners or your respawners uh, are in the right area so or within this volume you want to make sure that this specific area you want to make sure all the spawners related to this specific specific area will be within this volume and then we're gonna make another volume and then another volume you kinda see where I'm going with this here there you go uh, you're gonna wanna rename them uh, something you remember, so I'm just going to name this area 1 and kind of just, you know, area 2 and area 3. Alright, cool. Now we got all that set up. The last thing we really need, uh, because you can have more than three sections, obviously, I'm pretty sure that was self-explanatory, but just in case, you can do this for as many zones as you have in your map, up to like, well, just the limit of forage, if we're being honest, which is a lot. The last thing we're going to really need is actually some pointers because we're going to make a uh, area monitor. We're going to make a, a zone here. So let's turn the boundary on for this. And uh, we're going to make it pretty tall. You Basically, if you have flying vehicles in your map and you want to set this checkpoint area kind of thing up, you're going to want to make it pretty tall. 
because as well unless you have like a multi-layered map like let's say here you're gonna go here but then you're gonna go around and back up some stairs and you come to, across the top here then you wouldn't want to do that but if it's a wide open map you're gonna want to have it pretty tall so that way if somebody has a flying vehicle then they can uh, hit this checkpoint as well so we're gonna make it pretty tall we're gonna go 80 tall the width you want to get you're gonna want to make it so that way the zone can fully register that a player or uh, something has entered it and uh, so so this is pretty good right here we're gonna this is basically our door our entrance to the next area of the map and we're just gonna keep on going and make sure this extends all the way out so that way players can't get around it so if you have like um, some some scenery or terrain you can kind of collide or uh, in, intersect it with that would be that's probably the best way to do it because you don't want players to get around it and then something happens and then they get restarted all the way back to the beginning that would uh, be pretty bad unless they're speedrunners of course but I don't know all about the speedrunning thing so anyway let's go ahead and name this area to door because this is basically the entrance to the next area and then we're going to duplicate this and move it over here. You're probably going to have a very non-geometrical uh, map like this. Not very square. So you'll, you'll have different sizes for each of your doors and, and all that good stuff. We're going to go ahead and name this Area 3 Door. There we go. And that is it for this tutorial's map setup. Of course, like I said, if you have multiple sections, you just kind of repeat the process. You can throw spawns all around in your second area, all around in your first area, all that good stuff. Um, as a matter of fact, there is one thing we do need to change real quick, and it's in the object properties, but we've got all the objects placed, so our map setup is done. But what is very important about these spawn volumes is you want to set them to disable the spawn points, not have them enabled. It's much easier to do this because if you have it to where, you know, you use the spawn volumes themselves, you're looking at a much longer script. This is actually the easiest and shortest way to do it using uh, spawn volumes. So there we go. Our map setup is done. You're going to want to make sure all of them have it set to where they will um, disable the spawns when they are active. We're going to go ahead and grab all of them. Well, actually, we need to play script brain. That's a separate script brain. Uh, to give me a weapon to kill myself, which is a rocket launcher, so that way, you know, we can actually test out these spawns without having to wait forever for a grenade to blow me up. We're just going to name this uh, Checkpoint Manager. You can name it whatever you want. You don't have to name it. It's just something that I started doing to really remember what I'm doing. So I'm going to speed this up and go ahead and grab all of the objects we need, which is our two pointers and our volumes. All right, we got it. So let's go ahead and start the scripting part. Okay, so I'll go ahead and bring them all in here with Y. Kind of separate these things a little bit. Area 1, Area 2, Area 3's door, Area 2 door, and then of course Area 3. Okay, so at the start of the game, you want to make sure that your uh, first respawners will work. So let's go to our events and on game start. On game start for sure, you don't want to have it on gameplay start this time or... Uh, your respawners may not work right, but this does not affect initial spawns, by the way. Initial spawns will not be affected, so you do not have to worry. Your game will start just fine, and everything's good, so you're good there. So anyway, we're, what we're going to do is we're actually going to delete it, because that's how we're working with this. We're going to delete the zones as we uh, go through the doors, our checkpoints. It's going to delete the uh, thing that is disabling the spawns. And as we go, these spawns or these zones will come back. And as they're coming back, that means that the spawns inside them will no longer work. Okay, so now we're going to use on object entered area, which is in just basic events. There we go. And our area monitor will be our doors. So we're going to start with area two's door right here. Move these down a little bit. Now we're going to go to variables basic and grab a area monitor. There we go. Ta-da. Plug it in just like that. Now we're good. Now whenever something enters the door, it's going to do something. And we're actually going to plug up this thing to make sure that it is a player that enters. You don't want like a wheel of a warthog or grenade to trigger a checkpoint unless, you know, that's something you want to do. 
in which case you don't have to do these two right here you don't have to do these two steps you can kind of just continue on but i'm pretty sure you want it to be a player so we're going to go ahead and hook it up like that go ahead and plug in the object to the object here so that way the object that entered was it a player yes so now we go over here to uh objects again and we're just going to get a delete object we're going to be basically setting it up so that way these zones will be deleted as we enter an area and then uh respawning the one behind it so that way it uh disables the spawns behind you there you go and that way you don't have to worry about spawning too far back or anything you're only spawning in the new area that you're at the area that we're going to spawn back is spawn or area one so that way these spawns will no longer work and only area two spawns will work now because when we delete uh, area two our spawns will be functional because the object the volume is not there to stop them from working we're going to delete one more object we're going to delete that door we're going to make sure that you know you can't walk back through it and something break you know like that there we go unless you want to have checkpoints to go back and forth like backtrack in your map but uh, that is a much longer script and most people don't want to do that so we're just not going to cover it here but if uh if people need to enough then i will probably make a second part to explain how to do all that it's really not all that hard it's pretty simple but it is just increasing the script length so we're going to obviously make a copy of this essentially but for the third door or the second door for the for the third area we just go ahead and make sure it's a player that enters it and we're going to delete and spawn the area monitors or not the area well yes the area monitor and the volume go ahead and delete this right here so this will enable the spawns to be used in area three and then of course just like i did before we're gonna spawn area two back oh nope that is the wrong object we're gonna spawn area two back there we go so that way the volume will stop the spawns from working in area two and when you go to area two it automatically stops the spawns from area one so you don't got to worry about this one messing with you anymore and it's just a progressive linear campaign style uh respawn system and then you plug in this and you go ahead and delete that third door this will get it this will get what you want I'm going to go ahead and save it, and we can test it out right here. Alright, we're in section one. Alright, still in section one. And you notice we did have respawns over there. Yep. That was weird. First rocket never happened. I guess that's still a bug in the game. I thought they would have fixed that by now. Yeah, so you can see that we're only spawning in Area 1, but what if we go into Area 2? What happens here? Go ahead and respawn, see what happens. Area 2. There it is again! Hmm. Oh my goodness! <laughs> oh, Halo Infinite, never change. Anyway. That was rhetorical. Please, please update. <laughs> please fix. <laughs> yeah, you can see we're still spawning in uh, Area 2. If we go back to area one, because, you know, if you backtrack too far, even in a, you know, in a campaign, it's going to save your checkpoint and your far at your furthest progressive point. So if you forgot something, uh, unless, you know, you have a campaign that's non-linear, this wouldn't be a problem anyway. So let's go over to area three and see how that goes. Well, it looks like that's it successful and this is assuming that you want uh for all teams if they're separate teams uh it will generally work because these are all neutral spawns if for some reason you want to have separate teams uh you can have those volumes to affect the opposing team and uh all that good stuff you can also have it affect the initial spawns but i definitely don't recommend that at all because you know you might break the game to where you can't spawn at all and you get stuck in the loading uh camera and that's happened on a few of my trial and errors. So yeah, that's how you do it. That's how you get campaign style checkpoints for your uh, for your sections of your map in just a few uh, few script nodes of script. Well, there you go. 
A follow-up tutorial will be sometime soon. It takes this and shows you how to add campaign-style checkpoint teleports from multiple players in the map. Same for console interaction teleports, just like campaign, so that way your maps can be fully functional in a multiplayer setting. <sighs> so we did it. You guys got us to 500, and we are flying past that even now. That backup really saved everybody in that last attack on the town. Machinima jokes aside, I wanted to take another minute to thank you guys for sticking around. As this channel continues to grow, I'll likely be adding more projects to it, such as ZHS, Forge Map Showcases, and other content as it expands beyond just tutorials. Depending on how it goes, this channel may branch out into separate channels for that specific content once it reaches a certain size so we can keep things organized. We can only go up from here, right? I'll see you on the next one.